On March 22, 1999, a naked woman with a padlocked collar ran down a road in New Mexico, begging for help. 22-year-old Cynthia Vigil Jaramillo had been kidnapped several days prior and only escaped after she obtained the key to her chains and used an ice pick to ward off one of her kidnappers. Running down a dirt road, Jaramillo sought help from two passing cars before eventually running into a trailer with an open door. The woman inside called the police for her and in doing so exposed a hidden kidnapping and sexual assault operation run by David Parker Ray. David Parker Ray was born on November 6, 1939, in Belen, New Mexico. According to the FBI, Ray may have been fantasizing about sexually torturing people since he was a teenager in the 1950s. At the time of his capture, he was a 59-year-old state park employee. He committed his crimes in a 22-foot white trailer next to his residence near Elephant Butte Lake in Elephant Butte, New Mexico. His crimes, ranging from kidnapping, sexual assault, and allegedly murder went unnoticed by law enforcement for years. It took Jaramillo's heroic escape to unravel the extent and scale of his operation that he ran with his live-in girlfriend, Cynthia Cindy Lee Hendy. According to Jaramillo, she met Ray and Hendy in Albuquerque through an acquaintance at a convenience store. She agreed to engage in sex work with Ray for $30. When she went to meet Ray in his camper, Jaramillo encountered Hendy and Ray, who used a badge to pose as a police officer. He arrested her, placed her in handcuffs, and transported her to his and Hendy's home, where, as Jaramillo later testified, they sexually tortured her. For three days, Ray and Hendy kept Jaramillo chained up, inflicting torture, including, but not limited to, rape, sending electrical currents through her body via clips attached to her breasts and vaginal area, and being hung up in the living room and whipped. On the day of her escape, Jaramillo found the key to her chains while Ray was at work, and used an ice pick to fight back against Hendy which gave her a chance to flee. After the escape of Jaramillo, investigations began into David Parker Ray and his residence in Elephant Butte, New Mexico, located just next to Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Elephant Butte was a newly incorporated town, only a year old, and had an estimated population of just one to 2,000 people at a time. A few days after Jaramillo escaped, another alleged victim came forward, noting that she had been kidnapped and held for four days in February of 1999. The woman was an acquaintance from Truth or Consequences who was kidnapped after she came to Ray and Hendy's trailer asking to borrow cake mix on February 17th. According to an affidavit, she stepped inside the trailer as she waited for Ray to return. After a few minutes, he came back, knife in hand, and explained that she was being kidnapped. At the same time, Hendy held a gun pointed at her. A metal collar was placed on her after all of her clothes had been removed. After that, she was repeatedly assaulted and tortured sexually over the next four days. A few days into her captivity, they took her to the trailer on their property, which was filled with restraints and medical devices. This trailer was known as the Toy Box and would eventually lead to Ray's moniker, the Toy Box Killer. She eventually convinced them to let her go and Ray dropped her off near the interstate in the desert. In her testimony, she stated that she had to pretend to be their friend to make it out alive. There, she was picked up by an officer, who she reported the events to. However, it appears that nothing was done about it at the time. According to reports, the information provided by the two known victims led officials to believe that Ray and Hendy had experience in these crimes, and there were potentially more victims. One FBI agent noted at the time that homicide had not been ruled out as a potential crime, even though no bodies had been discovered. They also began investigations in Arizona and Texas, looking for leads on any crimes potentially committed by Ray, as he was believed to have spent time there. The investigation would soon spread to 10 states with over 100 leads. Investigators would find at Ray's residence over 1,000 items of evidence, including photos of victims that seemed to indicate abuse at the hands of Ray and Hendy. Inside of Ray's toy box were various restraints, whips, knives, medical tools, including a gynecological exam table, cameras, handcuffs, other torture tools, and a coffin. There was also a sign on the wall that read Satan's Den. Ray would videotape his victims as they were restrained to a table and tortured, sometimes days on end. He even had a recording of himself telling his victims what he was going to do to them, so he wouldn't have to repeat himself over and over again to each victim. In it, he said that they would be treated as sex slaves and then drugged to erase the memory. The tape says, you're gonna be used and abused any way we want. 
including repeatedly raped. As a result of the investigation into Ray and Hendy, another man, 27-year-old Dennis Roy Yancey of Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, was arrested on April 9, 1999. He was a known associate of Ray and Hendy. Yancey was charged with murder in the disappearance of 22-year-old Marie B. Parker, who went missing from an Elephant Butte saloon on July 5, 1997. He was the only person ever charged with murder as a part of this investigation. He told police that he killed Parker in Ray's trailer and did so on his orders. He also claimed that he and Ray's daughter lured her into captivity. David Parker Ray is also suspected in the disappearance of 22-year-old Jill Troya. Troya, who was Ray's daughter's girlfriend, went missing in the fall of 1995. She was last seen with Ray's daughter, Jessie, at the Frontier Restaurant in Albuquerque. In addition, another victim was found during the investigations. This woman was identified via a video found on Ray's property. She had a tattoo of a bird on her leg, which provided investigators with enough information to identify her. The victim had disappeared for a few days and reappeared in bad shape and disoriented. The woman, who had since moved to Colorado, was living in truth or consequences at the time of her capture. She claimed she had been held captive by Ray in late July of 1996. She had gone out to a few bars in Elephant Butte with some friends, but wound up alone with Ray's daughter Jessie by the end of the night. According to the woman, Jessie agreed to take her to a friend's house, but actually took her to Ray's house, where she was held captive for two and a half days and sexually abused. She remembers being held at knife point in Ray's living room before being handcuffed. She also had her eyes and mouth duct taped and a dog collar placed around her neck. She would later testify that she was taken outside and pulled around by her neck with a collar and a leash. She was then tied to a bench and her feet strapped in stirrups where she was sexually penetrated. She claims that Jesse was present during her assault. Future jurors would watch a six minute video of this assault. On April 16th, 1999, it was ruled that Ray was to stand trial after sufficient evidence was provided to show he may be responsible for the 25 counts he was charged with, including kidnapping and criminal sexual penetration. Ray was to stand trial three times, one for each of his accusers. Ray first was tried for an abduction of the Colorado woman in 1996. He faced 12 counts in this case, but it resulted in a mistrial after jurors couldn't agree on the counts. However, the case was retried in April of 2000, where Ray was found guilty on all 12 counts. In July 2001, Ray pleaded guilty to kidnapping, rape, and conspiracy to kidnap in the case of Jaramillo as a way to protect his daughter. Ray would never stand trial for the woman who claimed she was kidnapped in February 1999 because she died of pneumonia before her case could be tried. As a part of a plea agreement, her case was dismissed. In September 2001, David Parker Ray was sentenced to over 223 years in prison for his crimes in both cases. According to a local news station, a part of Ray's plea deal was that he would work with authorities to share more information about his activities. But when they went to meet with him, he refused to cooperate. Shortly after his conviction, Ray gave an interview where he claimed he never committed any crimes against women, saying, I get my excitement from making a woman happy. Sorry, that like actually upset me when I read it. <laughs> Oh, okay. Shortly after his conviction, Ray gave an interview where he claimed he never committed any crimes against women, saying, I get my excitement for making a woman happy. My trailer had numerous sex toys of different types, all different fetishes. I got pleasure out of the woman getting pleasure. I did what they wanted me to do. Despite his 223 year sentence, Ray only ended up serving a few months in prison before dying of a heart attack in 2002 at the age of 62. Cynthia, Cindy, Lee Hendy's charges were lowered from 25 counts to just five. She pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to kidnap, two counts of accessory to kidnapping, and two counts of accessory to criminal sexual penetration. She was sentenced to 36 years in prison, but only served about 20 before being released in July of 2019. Glenda Jessie Jean Ray was sentenced to two and a half years in prison and five years probation for her involvement as an accomplice in the torture cases as part of a plea agreement. Despite never being charged with, let alone convicted of murder, David Parker Ray is frequently referred to as the toy box killer. And a spokesperson for the FBI told a local journalist that as of 2011, the Bureau considered Ray a murderer. Around that time, a resurgence in interest in Ray's case occurred as the FBI released photos of items found at Ray's residence, which they asked the public to view in hopes it might lead to identifying more victims of his. 
This resurgence appeared to have been spurred by the news that Ray noted in his own writings that he had 40 victims, some of whom he could have potentially murdered. His journals included highly graphic descriptions of torture, but it's unknown if these writings were an accurate documentation of his actions or simply fantasies. At one point, Hendy told investigators that Ray had killed at least 14 people and dumped their bodies in and around the lake, but no bodies were ever found. In October 2011, authorities found a foot-long piece of femur. The bone was sent off to be analyzed, but in 2013, authorities stated it could not be identified. As recently as 2014, a retired New Mexico State Police Commissioner stated that the agency is convinced that there are remains, but they still have yet to be successful in locating them.